Good day everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we'll be talking about titration or volumetric analysis. Titration is the slow addition of one solution of a known concentration to a known volume of another solution of unknown concentration until the reaction reaches neutralization, which is often indicated by a color change. Now Let's look at the apparatus you'll need for a titration. Here we have our conical flask, also known as an Erlenmeyer flask. We have pipettes. You might see them looking like this or like this. We have our volumetric burette, filter funnel, and this is how you would set it up with the retort stand and the clamp. So basically, one solution would be in the burette and the other one would be in the conical flask. Let's say we were titrating sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid to find out the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. We would pipette 25 cm cube or 25 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide and place it in our Erlenmeyer flask. We would then, of course, add two drops of uh, acid base indicator which will change colors when the solution has neutralized so we would know when the end point is. We will of course place the acid in the burette and we would do that using a filter funnel. This will help to make sure that there is no spillage of the acid and you remove the filter funnel after you have placed in the acid because you don't want any excess acid dripping from the funnel and messing up the, the volume reading on the burette. Now from there we would basically just run, run volume of liquid out of the burette into the conical flask until we see the color change necessary and we would minus the final volume from the initial volume and that way we would get the total volume that we ran out. In a normal titration, we do this two or three times until we get consecutive volumes or volume close to each other and then we find the average of those. So that's the basic way of how you carry out the titration. You may come across acid-based titrations or redox titrations for the redox ones, you may not have to get indicator because redox reactions will often have their own color change based on the type of ion present. So if there is a reduction of the F Fe3 plus ion, it might change from orange brown to green. Now let's, let's look at an example of a titration calculation. Right here we have in a titration, 25 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide solution is exactly neutralized by 20 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. Now, the first step here is to write the equation, write the balanced equation. So we have hydrochloric acid or HCl. Don't forget to have aqueous if it's an acid, you must have the aqueous symbol plus sodium hydroxide, also an aqueous solution. And that is going to produce sodium chloride salt. plus water because as we know reaction between an acid and a base gives us salt and water that's aqueous and the water is liquid so this is the balance equation we have here as you can see 
and so we can tell that the mole ratio is uh, 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 so the number of moles of sodium hydroxide must equal the number of moles of hydrochloric acid and vice versa now we need to know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid we know the volume now we need to know how many moles so here's what we're going to do we're going to calculate first the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide so we use the formula number of moles is equal to the volume times the molar concentration in this case the volume is 0.025 decimeter cube or 25 cm cube I prefer to use decimeter cube Um, and it's volume times molar concentration, which is 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. Now, the, the main reason why I change the cm cube to dm cube is that the unit of volume here must be the unit of volume that was used for the concentration, or else the value you get is going to be wrong. So now we can just plug this into our calculator and we get the number of moles to be 0 0.0025 mole now what we know from doing the balance equation is that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide equal the number of moles of acid hence we know that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid equals 0 0.0025 as well okay we know that and we know the volume of the hydrochloric acid it took to fully neutralize so we know the volume now all we have to do is just uh, use the formula concentration is equal to number of moles which is 0 0.0025 over volume which in decimeter cubed is 0 0.02 And so plugging this into our calculator, we get 0 0.0.125 0 mole per dm cube. Basically, yeah. So that's that's it. There are some titration calculations that may get a bit more complex depending on uh, what you're reacting. You know, the balance equation won't always be this simple, but the basics of it is uh, is is very consistent. All you have to do is uh, establish the mole ratio, find the number of moles of the one of the one concentration, and use it to find the number of moles for the other one. Then just find the concentration using the volume that you would have gotten from the, or the average volume that you would have gotten from all your different titan values. Now let's go back over the apparatus. So we have the Erlenmeyer flask, we have uh, the pipette, and if you use this kind of pipette, remember it's never pipette by mouth. We have the volumetric burette, and we have uh, our filter funnel and this is the setup and what it's supposed to look like when you're using the burette always remember to get, run out a bit of liquid first to get rid of the ear bubbles if you're doing 
a titration, it always good to rinse the burette and the pipet with the solution that they're going to measure before carrying out said titration as well as the conical floss and ensure that the burette is straight or else that can affect your value of the volume reading. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is standards. You have primary and secondary standards. The primary standard is a substance of very high purity that is used to prepare the concentration of the standard solution in the volumetric analysis. So basically, the stand primary standard is a, is a substance which you can use to prepare the concentration of known solution. And not everything can be used as a primary standard. For example, sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide pellets will absorb moisture from the air before being dissolved in water, and so the concentration will always be a bit off if you mix the solution. Hence, you must use a, a secondary standard. Sodium carbonate, however, can be used as a primary standard as it doesn't really react with the air, and when you dissolve it in water, you can get a substance of very high purity, and then you can use that to titrate other things like hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide so that they can be used as standards. But the essence of it is that the primary standard has to be of very high purity and known con concentration easily. And so substances that react with the air or go much from the air, you cannot use those. Now, there are other types of titration aside from just acid-based and redox. You have a potential metric, you have uh, back titration, you have thermometric titration. I won't be covering most of those in these videos, but I have covered them on my Instagram account. I'll leave the link for that in the description, so we'll just go ahead and check it out. Thanks for watching. Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.